All right, guys, welcome back. We got the thunder rolling right now to another true series video. Basically, my name is Kyle Welcher. Thank you for clicking on this video. I really do appreciate it. And if you are new to the channel and you have not seen the true series yet, basically what that is is I go in this Ranger middle rod locker right here and I pull out my actual box of whatever bait it is I'm talking about and I show you what it actually looks like and exactly what I keep in it. So basically, got a few different brands of jigs that I do. Did I already say I'm doing jigs? This one I'm doing jigs in actually. So we're gonna go through my jig box here in just a minute. I'm gonna show you exactly what I keep. And right now, haven't fished tournament in a while. I don't keep it too stocked up. So the stuff might be like scraggly looking or old or have some super glue or whatever. And I'll still throw that around whenever I'm just fun fishing or whatever. So anyways, without further ado, let's open up this center console right here and pull out a couple jigs. So find my jig box right here. That's a mess in there right now, so don't pay too much attention to that. So basically, jig box, as you can see. So I always show you all this, uh, these stickers I put in my box. I put it on pretty much all sides, these stickers. These are actually from High Wears Creations. They're called Tackle Tags. I use them on everything. So like this right here is my pretty much my jig trailers. See right there, I got crawls wrote right there. I just, I mean, I've had that on there for years and years. I know the owner of the company, really good friend of mine. So that's what I, all these stickers are that you always see. High Wears Creations, Tackle Tags. So anyways, without further ado, let's open this bad dude up right here. Get a nice slow-mo panoram shot of that box right there. Just see all the nice little cubby holes with all the jigs in it. Some good, nice skirt material in there. Everything is ready to roll. Okay, so for real now, this box right here is, I mean, I keep a jig tied on at all times. Usually, I have two jigs on the front deck, almost always. So if you've seen me fish for a while, you know I keep a swim jig on the front deck, almost always, and then like a little dock skipping jig or something I could just pitch around to pretty much anything. So. Basically, I like to flip a lot with like creature bait, soft plastic, stuff like that. And whenever I'm going for a very vertical presentation, I like to use a creature bait more. When I'm doing more casting and a little bit more dragging, I'll go to a jig instead. But I do still flip a jig a pretty good bit. But it seems like a jig is a little bit better whenever you're doing a little bit more dragging throughout the cast. So that's whenever I pick if I'm going to throw a jig to cover or if I'm going to throw a creature bait to cover. So if I'm casting to it, isolated pieces of cover, a lot of times I will throw that jig. So I've got some stuff in here that... You know, it's kind of funky, a little bit deviated stuff. Like this sucker right here is a little bitty jig with a little like wire weed guard. I've never tied this thing on ever, but I've had it in here. The owner of the company actually gave it to me and I've been planning on throwing it. And you know, I might throw that next time I go out, I might throw it two years from now. You never know, but it's in there for in any way. So basically, y'all are gonna hear a common trend in this right here. Green pumpkin, black and blue, and white. That's basically what I keep and I'm gonna show you exactly what I keep it in. So. First off, I guess we'll start with swim jigs because that is like my number one go-to deal. So I keep, like this right here are my 3 8 ounce. Um, I think these are Pepper Shad colored untamed tackle Punisher swim jigs. I keep a couple. Like this one right here, I just took straight off. I was rigged up. Another one right here, I've thrown a little bit, just threw it back in here. So basically I keep a lot of these, a lot of duplicates of these. I've got some other ones right here. Like all these right here are the exact same jig with the exception of this one right here ain't got no skirt on it. So. That's how many of the exact same jigs I keep in my box. And why is that? Because I couldn't really tell you. I only use one in a day usually. But anyways, this is a swim jig I like. That's a prototype one. So I'll show you this one right here. This one I was throwing the other day actually. It's just a standard white 3 8 ounce Punisher swim jig from Untamed Tackle like I said. I have been throwing this sucker a ton recently. And the thing that I like about this has a 5 all owner jungle hook in it. I've had a hard time flexing this thing all the way out. Now I've, I've got to bend just a little. But I've never had a jig not bend at all, even when you throw like dirty jigs, no jack, that hook will bend a little as well. So this jig right here is the one I throw all the time swimming, and I keep it, like I said, in black and blue. There's the black and blue color right here. It's got a little bit of smoke gray in it, but that's pretty much just a black and blue color. And then also, I will keep that in something like this right here. Let me pull this one out. This is the deal gill color. Just a standard little green pumpkin color. I throw that around some, brim beds, docks, stuff like that. That's my three swim jigs I throw at all times. Now the main size swim jig I throw is a 3 8 ounce. Now that's one where I can deviate the trailer and I can keep it super high in the water column. I can put this little swim bait on back and I have no problem just throwing it and reeling it and getting it down five or six foot. So I, the 3 8 ounce is the best for me. Sometimes will I go to a half? Yeah. Sometimes will I go to a quarter? Yes. But it's very, very rare. And if I'm going to a quarter, it's really thick, really shallow grass. I'm going to keep it super high in the water column and fish it a little bit slower. If I'm going to a half ounce, it's deeper high drill. I'm casting it and I'm usually winding it, keeping it down there super deep on the bottom contact, stuff like that. So white, black, and blue, green pumpkin. That's all you need. Now, as far as trailers go, this trailer right here, a little swim bait, three and a half inch, is hard to beat. And then on the other side, 
any kind of a flap and crawl trailer. That's the only two you have to keep, and I keep those to match. I keep both those styles to match every single color in my boat at all times. Y'all seen that. You know, a lot of the same things for like chatterbaits and stuff like that that I throw on the trailer for my swim jigs. So let's move over now to a standard skipping casting jig. We're actually working right now. Untamed Tackle is an actual sponsor of mine, but they are. Before I worked with him, I told him, you gotta send me some jigs, and if I don't like them, I'm not gonna use them. So he sent me some stuff, and I instantly fell in love with the swim jig, and I would've used it. Even if we didn't come to an agreement, I would've still paid for them. So basically, this is the first true series where one of my sponsors is actually in the video. And we are now working on a skipping jig for me to skip around docks. He don't, doesn't currently have one, so I'm using other brands, and he knows that, and he's completely fine with that. So a normal compact skipping jig is what I'm gonna throw. Something not super bulky, because a bulky jig is a lot of bites, in the pre-spawn and it gets really big bites all the time but in the post-spawn whenever i'm traveling around lake to lake i don't have the time to throw like a huge jig with a huge trailer and try to you know it's pretty stressful trying to get 10 or 12 bites on that a day it's really a five bite five to seven bite kind of deal when you're throwing that big bulky jig in the post-spawn hear that thunder so what i try to do is downsize just a little bit i still throw a half ounce i just like to have one with a skirt which is a little bit smaller so you see this one right here a pretty small jig that's just a standard skipping jig that i keep in here at all times here's a Another one that's exactly the same right there. It's just pretty standard. Let me pull out one of these out of the pack right here. This is a, a different brand, but it's just a standard. I mean, a little bit smaller than some other brands. Skipping jig, got a good gamakatsu hook in it. So that's pretty much my green pumpkin skipping jig, and I keep those in. I got a pack of black and blue right here. I put four to one of these bags right here, and I keep those in my truck, and then whenever I, I can squeeze four in there, it just helps me stay more organized and stay a little bit, you know, less cluttered in the boat i keep those in the truck as duplicates also there's a, there's just a black and blue half ounce that i skipped that i was skipping earlier in the year still got the little speed crawl trailer on there y'all know that's my skipping jig trailer i throw the most is a little speed crawl so there's a black and blue half ounce and i do not keep these kind of jigs in white only keep these kind of jigs in in black and blue and green pumpkin you can see right here I got an Alabama crawl one. Some lakes in the pre-spawn, I will throw that little bit of orange on there. Do I think it makes a huge difference? Absolutely not. Does it make a little bit of difference? Who knows, maybe the crawfish do turn orange in the pre-spawn. So I will throw that sometimes. And then on the other hand, I keep some downsized, even from those jigs. So this one right here is like a little tiny finesse jig. Look at that little bee hook in it. That is a really good, can you see that? Don't even do makeup tutorial style. Take a look at this, here it is. All those colors, nice foundation in here, foundation in the front, all these colors in the back, contour into the back. Okay, so this right here, just a, a small jig. It's got a thinner, less strand skirt in it and just a really compact style. So let me pull out this one again. This is the, the big one, that's how it comes. You can tell it's a little bit smaller. I, I will cut it and deviate it based on what I'm doing. Fishing for smallmouth, a lot of spotted bass, extremely post-spawn, like when they first come out, they're post-spawn bass getting largemouth getting to a big time funk. This little jig right here will put some in the boat for me. So that has a, I think it has a four-alt gamakatsu in it, but you got to downsize for that one. Lighter line, lighter rod. I go to a seven foot three medium heavy for throwing this small little jig right here. And then a seven foot three heavy point blank rod for throwing this big jig right here. So basically, almost always I'm skipping docks. I'm gonna use 18 pound line. I will go up sometimes if I'm, if I'm only fishing docks with brush pile, I'll go up to 20. If I'm only fishing super shallow docks that are, you know, I feel like, you know, the fish are really up there super shallow and they can see in that crystal clear water, I might even go down to 15. But if I'm fishing like a standard 8 to 10 foot deep, I feel like the line size doesn't matter as much that deep. So I'm going to always go to 18, 20 pound test, downsize it if I want to fish a little bit shallower and I feel like the fish are a little more finicky up there. So Another thing is, I don't want to go to a bigger weight like a 20 or 22 or 25 pound line for fishing jigs because it dictates how much it falls too much. A big line just drags that jig down. So 18 pound test is kind of like the sweet spot. The line that I like to throw has a diameter of 0.37 or 0.38. I'll throw a couple different brands, but that size diameter seems to be the best for me for getting the best fall out of a jig and keeping a lot of strength. Strength. So that's what I do. Me and Hunter always make fun of the way <laughs> of the word strengths. So I almost said it right there on video and says strengths, but I actually say strength. <laughs> but we, we heard a guy on video one time that kept saying uh, that he's fishing his strengths. So we always <laughs> say that that's my strengths, but that's not how we talk. We are from Alabama. We talk like rednecks. So we say strength. So anyways, my jig box right here. That's pretty much it, guys. I mean, really, I showed y'all the big jig, green pumpkin, black and blue. I told y'all the small jig. I only keep that in green pumpkin because it's, I'm only going to throw that when it's tough and clear. And then, like I said, the swim jigs, black and blue, the white, actually, the pepper shad color is the one I prefer. And then some kind of deal gill, some kind of other, you know, swim jig color. I, will, I do have some like this, just a little bit different swim jig color. You can see it's got the orange in it and the blue. 
I mean, I, I keep some different colors that I deviate, like I got this little magic crawl, whatever it's called. It's got some different colors in it. Maybe it looks like a bluegill or something skipping through there, but does it make that big of a difference? Absolutely not. I can get by with green pumpkin in clear water, black and blue in dirty water. Now, the last thing I want to say is the types of trailers that I want to throw. I don't have any in here rigged up with a chunk style trailer, but you can see this right here. This is a big paddle tail type trailer. It's going to slow that fall down a ton. It's going to give it a, that, that bait right there is going to have a lot of slow thump to it when it's falling. This one right here is going to have a very fast, consistent action going down because everybody knows what a speed crawl trailer looks like. So I throw, in a, a normal circumstances, I throw a zoom super chunk, a zoom speed crawl, and every once in a while I'll throw something like this net bait pack of slim or something like that whenever the water's a little bit more stained I want to get a little more thump out of it so that's about the trailers that I throw I always throw a jig on an 8.2 to 1 gear ratio reel I almost forgot I almost left these 10 dang swim jigs out to dry on the front deck of the boat you gotta put these suckers back up so on all my jigs swim jigs or flipping jigs I use a or skipping jigs I use 8.2 to 1 gear ratio reel the more casts I can make, the better, especially when you're using a big fish bait and you're not getting a ton of bites. The more presentations you can make, the more likely you are to get a bite, in my opinion. So, the swim jig, I didn't tell you how much about that. The rod that I throw that on is a 7'3 heavy. You can get away with a 7'3 medium heavy. I just prefer the 7'3 heavy. I can move fish a little bit better out of the grass or out of the stumps. And I'll skip that sw skipping jig so far up in the heavy cover when they bite it. It's just you're doing everything you can just to hang on and pull them out of that cover. So I like to use a heavier rod for that 7'3 heavy point blank rod that I built. And then a 50 to 60 pound braid based on that. The braid I'm using right now is a 50 pound 9 strand K9 for that swim jig. It's the one I've been using a lot for that swim jig. So basically, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get a custom rod built, you will not be disappointed if you recommend a point blank rod. Obviously, Fuji components are the best. That's what I use on all my rods. And then I appreciate you watching this video. My name is Kyle Welcher. Thank you for checking it out. Leave me a comment what you want to see next. I got a lot on the lake breakdown video. So me and Hunter are going to fish tomorrow. We'll show y'all how I would break down a new lake, even though it's my old lake that I fish on. All the time so anyways i hope you enjoyed the video appreciate you watching hit that subscribe button elite series is almost back up rolling you don't want to miss any notifications because we are about to go to eufaula and catch some giant bass and you don't want to miss it i will see y'all in the next video